Thanks for joining me today. In this video, we will cover the Forcepoint DLP file fingerprinting capabilities. We will show how to set up a file fingerprint task, how to create a rule using the file fingerprint, and then test monitoring and blocking when the file fingerprint rule is triggered. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell to be alerted when more videos are posted. Enjoy. Let's start off by understanding the two types of fingerprinting options that are available within the Forcepoint DLP solution. The first is file fingerprinting, which is what we will cover in this video. And the second is the database fingerprinting. The file fingerprinting feature allows an organization to protect any sensitive information that exists inside of a file or a file repository. File fingerprinting can be used to protect any network file system, file share, or SharePoint directory. The file fingerprinting process does not save or back up the data, but instead saves partial hashes that are used to detect the fingerprinted data that is leaving the environment. The file fingerprinting process relies on a file fingerprint task, which relies on a crawler that is used to scan the sensitive files. The file fingerprint task will be configured to tell the crawler what files to scan, when to scan, and what credentials to use to perform the scan. Now that we understand what the file fingerprint does and what the dependencies are, let's go ahead and configure a fingerprinting task. From the data module, go to Main, Policy Management, Content Classifiers, File Fingerprinting. This page is where we can create or edit the file fingerprinting tasks or see the status and statistics of existing file fingerprinting tasks. To create a new file fingerprinting task, click the new button in the top left, then select the type of file fingerprint. For this video, we will be creating a standard file system fingerprinting task. On the first page, we will input the name and description, as well as select which crawler this task will use to perform the scan. We can also see here the fingerprinting mode options, sensitive content, and ignored section. The sensitive content option is used to identify the content and files to fingerprint. This tells the system, this is the sensitive information I want to protect. The ignored section is used to identify parts of documents that the system should ignore. For example, disclaimers, copyrights, and logos. We will select the sensitive content option for our purposes here. The other section on this page is the fingerprinting method, content similarity, and exact match. The content similarity option will look for similarities between the scanned content and the fingerprinted file. This is what allows the DLP system to detect sections of the fingerprinted document. For example, if we fingerprinted a book, let's say War of the Worlds, and someone was to take out a paragraph and try to leak that information out, our DLP system would be able to match this to the fingerprint and take action. The other option here is the exact match, which is quicker, but will not find a match if even one character in the file is changed. We will select the content similarity option for our purposes here. The next page is the root folder, where we can configure the path for the highest folder in the hierarchy within the file system that this task will scan. For this video, we will target one of the servers in this environment and the C drive as the highest folder. Once we have configured the path of the root folder, we will need to input the credentials that the crawler will use to perform the scan. We will configure network admin credentials here to make sure that we have the appropriate permissions to this file system. The next page is scan files, where we can choose which specific folder we want to scan if we do not want to scan the entire root folder. We will select the users folder and deselect the C drive for our purposes here. The next page is the scheduler, where we can configure when we want the file fingerprinting task to scan the configured file system. The options here allow you to choose the frequency, once, daily, weekly, or continuously, as well as the hours of the day to perform the scan. We will select the scan times for daily, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. The next page is the file filtering, where we can configure the task to include or exclude specific file types, files of a specific age, or even files over or under a certain size. We will enable the filter by type option and include the office documents file types so that we only fingerprint office documents within the target file system. The next page is export where we can export the fingerprints to another server to either use as a backup or to transfer the fingerprint to another system. We will not use the export option in this video. Finally, the finish page is where we can confirm the configuration that we just went through and complete the task. The task will now run based on the schedule that we configured within it. We can also manually start the task now. 
Now that we have configured the file fingerprinting task, we will need to configure a custom policy that utilizes the file fingerprint classifier we just created. On the left, navigate to Main, Policy Management, DLP Policies, Manage Policies. To create a new custom policy, click the Add button in the top left and select Custom Policy. On the first page, we will input the name and description of this policy. The next page is where we define which classifiers the rule will use to check outbound information against. Here, we will select the Add button and the fingerprinting option from the dropdown. In the pop-up window, we will select the fingerprint classifier that we just created. Now we can see the fingerprint classifier is the condition for this policy. The next page is where we define the severity of the incident when this rule triggers, as well as what action the system should take. We will configure the severity to high, and we will set the action plan to block all. Edit the block all action plan to verify that each channel has the appropriate action applied to it. Here we can see that the endpoint channels are all set to block. The next page is the source, which is where we will define which users, groups, IPs, and or network ranges this policy applies to. We will leave this set to all for our purposes here. The next page is the destination page, which is where we will enable each channel that we want this rule to apply to. We will enable endpoint email, endpoint HTTP, endpoint HTTPS, endpoint printing, endpoint applications specifically for cloud storage, endpoint removable media, and endpoint LAN channels. The last page here is the finished page where we will see a summary of the rule that we just created and finish the configuration. Don't forget to hit the deploy button to push these changes out. Before we can test on the client, let's go back to the fingerprinting task and make sure it has completed. Let's navigate back to main, policy management, content classifiers, file fingerprinting. We will select the task that we created earlier. Here on the right side, we can see the details of this scan. We can see that the scan is completed, although with some errors. We can also see how many files were fingerprinted with this task, as well as other various information relating to this task. If we select the fingerprinted files number, then we can see a list of the files that were actually fingerprinted. Here we can see that our test file, waroftheworlds.doc, was found and fingerprinted. Now that we have confirmed that the fingerprinting task has completed and includes our sensitive document, let's move over to the client and try to exfiltrate some data. Here on the desktop of this client is our sensitive War of the Worlds fingerprinted document. Let's try to leak this document and or its contents to see how the DLP endpoint solution responds. We'll start by trying to leak this out to the internet through the browser. Here on dlptest.com, we can upload some of the contents of the file and see the notification that the endpoint has blocked the transaction. Now let's try to upload the file itself. We can see that it is also blocked. Okay, now we're going to try and email out this file as an attachment. Again, the endpoint notifies us that it has blocked the transaction. How about just adding some of the contents to the body of the file? Also blocked, same as before. How about we try to copy this file over to a cloud storage application like Dropbox? We'll drag and drop this file into the Dropbox app. As expected, the endpoint blocked the transaction. What's another way we could get this data out? Let's try to print it. As we can see here, the print appears to go through, but then is blocked by the endpoint. What if we moved it over to another server on the network that doesn't have the DLP endpoint agent installed? Looks like the endpoint blocked us again. Okay, fine. We'll just transfer this over to USB. Blocked again. <sighs> I could have gotten away with it too, if it wasn't for your meddling endpoints and that dog too. The last thing we'll do is check out what incidents were generated from these tests. Here we can see that there is an incident for each exfiltration attempt. 
This includes a copy of the content that was matched to the fingerprint, whether it was the whole document or an excerpt. Thanks for watching this video where we configured and demonstrated the Forcepoint DLP Solutions file fingerprinting capabilities. If you have any other questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below or reach out to your account manager for more assistance. If you would like to see more of these videos, feel free to hit that like button and subscribe to be alerted whenever more videos are posted. See you next time.